Good morning and welcome back to another video and today is another day of the zero to gold cap challenge. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay so today we are going to be going over a few farms that I have been currently doing. I'm basically going to be combining them all into one because it's mainly a battle pet type esque thing and pretty much this will probably be like one of the last videos of me actually doing a battle pet farm until like shadowlands or like a new battle pet comes out or something along those lines hence why i'm compiling it into one video today because it's all pretty much the same esque way in order you actually go about doing it so for today we are going to be going over the hatchlings now this can now this will be the Ravasaur, the Darting and the Leaping Hatchling and these ones can be sold on the auction house for a pretty penny and overall it's very easy in order to do. So what we're actually doing now is we are currently in Onguro Crater, we're going to be actually farming up the Ravasaur Hatchling. Now the Ravasaur Hatchling I've actually made a macro for this and it actually shows you on the map whereabouts they actually are. So there's one nest there, there's one nest there, one nest there, one nest there. What you're gonna be wanting to do is just every now and then casual farming once again. And you just go over to the spawn locations and all you do there is like you see if there's a nest that is up. Now I currently know that there's no nests up for this one because I actually just looted one. <laughs> so pretty much that's what I've been doing for this farm. And overall, it's actually been quite good, mainly due to the fact that I can just come home from like work or something and I can still get something of gold value and that is the Ravasaur Hatchling. Now the Ravasaur Hatchling is around about 590 gold on my server on, as a market value and for the region market average is about 5864 gold. Now at this moment in time it's pretty damn awesome overall. And overall, I find that this is kind of like a really easy one in order to do because all you do is fly over to those spawn locations, see if they're up. It's really that dead simple. As a nice little side note to this, there is a chest spawn location which should be over here and this is in your Ongoro Crater as well. There are loads of different types of treasure chests you can do alongside paired with this farm. And to gather mate and imported the treasures, you'd be able to see in Ongoro Crater there are some chests all dotted around. We are currently sat at one of them right now and I find that you can pick up some blues from this as well so when you're actually doing that you can just fly over there just double check and see if one's up it's just like a nice little uptick so to speak so i just wanted to throw that in right there now overall what do you expect to get from this farm now i did this for a few days like a bit of a week and i've managed to get like one every single day since i've been doing it so that's pretty good i'm really happy with that overall and we've made a quite a sizable amount of gold with just the leaf the Ravasaur hatchlings. So what we can do now is we can then send that over towards Giblet because then Giblet can sell those on the auction house as well and that will be six of the Ravasaur hatchlings. Now alongside that we actually did get some transmog items from the rare that spawns right next to them, so that's another thing that we can bear in mind as well. We also got a little bit of devil of saw there because there was a little devil of saw trying to attack me right while before I was going to do the video. And that this farm is pretty bog standard, you just find the nest. So let's just jump over towards the darting hatchling. Okie dokie, as like before, we're going to be going over and trying to farm up the darting hatchling. Obviously, we've got quite a few of these. We also got some other transmog items as well from this as well. And at the moment, the Darting Hatchling is around about 994 gold as the Mimbio and 997 gold on the market value. The region market value average for this battle pet is 2,490 gold and it can be farmed up in Dusk Wallow Marsh. Now, other than that, all you have to do, press the macro once again. I will be linking these macros in the description if you guys so wish to do this. But really, all the nests are pretty clustered together so it's really not that hard in order to do and you can just park an alt there and just farm it up for like a week of just casual farming and then you'll be able to get it. So what you'll be doing, you'll be looking for a nest called Dart's Nest and same as before you'll be picking up a darting hatchling which we've just received one there 
and that's another 1,000 golds worth of stuff. Obviously, the sell rate on these are is 0.01, so don't be so be prepared that you won't be selling them almost immediately. This is a casual farm, and some of the items from casual farming will take a bit of a long time to actually sell. But overall, I don't find it to be that much of an inconvenience when it comes to all of that jazz. Obviously, it will take him a little bit of time in order to do all of, to actually sell all these battle pets. So it's not something you can do like every all the time because these battle pets take a while to sell. But it's nice to like just have make get a stockpile of them and then start selling them because then you can focus on other things. And when they do sell, you have a nice little uptick right there. So just running through what I've actually been doing so far throughout this week. Obviously, who. I have actually had some questions about the add-on once again I, on my top left hand corner, I've seen quite a lot of you guys. I have done a guide for this, but just to reiterate, this is executive assistant add-on and basically it's just to create checklists and I find it to be exceedingly helpful when I'm doing my stuff when on a casual day. So. Pretty much, that's what I've been doing. I'm just bulking out loads of stuff in order to have a nice stockpile of things. So when Shadowlands hits, I've still got a load of old world stuff to sell and the prices will obviously increase. And alongside that, I can then focus on Shadowlands-esque content. So what we'll be actually doing now is we'll go over towards the Northern Barrens for this one instead of Duskwalla Marsh and we'll be on our warrior, Iranos and what he'll be farming up is the last one, which is the Leaping Hatchling. And this one is in the Northern Barrens. Once again, we will be doing a macro for this as well. So by the way, all the macros will be in the description down below, just so you guys know where to farm them up. But alongside that, it's really not that hard in order to do. This is like a, a really, really lazy way in order to make some gold with battle pets because these battle pets, uh, they do sell, but they take a little while to sell, so to speak. So just bear that one in mind right there. You're not gonna make millions of gold from this, but it's a nice little uptick if you are trying to squeeze as much gold out of everything as possible. So what we'll do now is we'll just fly around, go to all the little spawn locations on here and see if it's up and do, 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 no, not up. And the nest is there, that's tax nest. So, we'll just open that up, see the Leaping Hatchling. Currently the Leaping Hatchling is at a min buyer of 100 gold. This one is seemingly to be a bit low down at this moment in time, and at the moment it will rise back up on the prices on my server. I've just got to be patient myself, I've got to be patient with these. So, market value of 325 gold and a region market value average of 1,479 gold. I'm gonna de decline that actual guild request I hate those they really do bug the hell out of me but alongside that Enos he's all good he's all set so leaping hatchlings as well they do tend to sell pretty damn good mainly you will try and find these nests the nests on that hand there's only one up at any one given time so that is one thing you might want to bear in mind when it comes towards the ravisaur the leaping and the darting hatchlings you need to bear that one in mind right there so if you've only picked one up from one nest there's only one nest available at any one given time so please don't spend like hours waiting for it it's literally a casual thing so if you wanted to go ahead and do that i would highly recommend doing that um, or as a casual basis when it comes to casual farming. Now, that being the case, let's just send those over to Giblet and then we can have a gander at all of that. Basically, the reason for this video today is just to go through the other last few bits of my lovely ways in which I like to do some casual farming and some bulking out, and then we can then focus on other things that are yeah, and other things that we're actually going to be stockpiling, so crafting stuff and little bits of extra ways in order to squeeze as much little good bits of gold as we can out of the left of BFA while stockpiling at the same time. So, that being the case, let's just jump over to Giblet for the gold for the day. Overall, how do, am I thinking at the end of this expansion? Uh, at the moment, I'm kind of thinking it's pretty damn good for 
just like stockpiling and sorting yourself out really. When it comes towards like gold making at the moment, I'm finding it to be really difficult. I'm not just the only one who's saying that. It's a lot harder to actually make any form of gold at this moment in time. So I must admit it's a, seeming to be a lot more harder in order to get to make a gold at the at the end of this expansion. When it came to like Legion and all that jazz, I found it to be easier to make gold at the end of the expansion, but with this expansion for BFA, I'm finding it to be incredibly difficult when it comes towards just, in fact, just making any form of headway when it comes to gold making. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just um, very irritating at the moment to actually try and make any form of gold at the moment. Currently, just looking at all of this different types of stuff at the moment, I'm finding that raw gold is tending to be the, the best solution if you're still trying to grind out as much gold as you possibly can. Raw gold esque type things. What I would highly recommend at the moment is Black Rock Foundry and also doing all of the LFR raids for WAD. They seem to be doing quite well for Raw Gold wise and if you wanted to do it on an hourly basis either Skyreach or Freehold they seem to be really good. Now I, I actually did watch a video a while back from Comlet. He actually did the, I, I believe it was like a Mechagon one where you would actually go in and you would kill all of the random trash mobs in there and I'm going to be testing that out uh, soon because that actually looks quite profitable when it comes towards raw gold wise and you can do it without having a super high eye level as well so that's something I do want to check out myself but aside from all of that how much gold do we make for the week and we can probably check that out right now with our portable mailbox and doo -doo -doo, we actually made 36,976 gold for this time and since the last cleanup so we'll just say for the week and the things of note aren't actually anything that amazing it's literally just a mechanist chopper for 34,674 gold yes we, it's actually gone up in price by about 6,000 gold that's really good and that's ni really nice to see overall so what we'll do is 36,976 gold and at the moment it's going to actually give us a nice little uptick towards our gold that we've actually got and or we're going to be receiving throughout all of this so really not that worried overall it's mainly mainly just bulking if you can tell from my bags and all of that jazz so yeah it's, it's, it's mainly just stockpiling all of that in order to maximize the amount of gold that I've actually got and then we can then when when we get into like legion that when we get into Shadowlands, we can then start selling all this stuff. Obviously, we've got like sealed tomes of the Lost Legion and all that jazz. They've dropped in price recently, and yeah, quite frankly, I'm going to be keeping a hold of as many as I can at the moment. Obviously, it actually states that I've got like seven overall in all of my characters, so that's something I may want to bear in mind right there. What do I actually think of gold making at this moment in time? Well, at the moment, it's kind of really, really difficult. Any form of headway when it comes to gold making at this moment in time. But there are still possible solutions for this. Now, I'm really not overly too concerned for myself. I know that when Shadowlands hits, the entire market's going to go up and sort itself out and be a bit more adjusted. So I'm just staying put till then. I know a lot of you are still working towards your Brutosaurs and yeah, it's, it's gonna be a massive push because yeah, it's, uh, it's not that, it's very difficult to actually get that type of thing and I can understand your concerns with all of that. Now, currently for me, when it comes towards like any form of gold making for this, I am noticing that the mining module and all that, I'm, no, I'm seeing that everything's staying quite static when it comes towards like gold per hour wise, so that's kind of good, but it's at a low gold per hour, so like Saronite Ore. Still got a great sell rate, still pretty good, but your gold per hour is pretty damn naff when it comes to things. Everything at the moment seems to be quite low valued and over, over farmed. Obviously you do have some which is like coarse leather, exotic leather and wind scales. They seem to be doing quite well when it comes towards like gold making in general um, for me. And when it comes to like mount farming, mount farming is still a, a lucrative method in order to make some gold, but it heavily relies on your RNG. So 
please weigh up the pros and cons before doing this because I have spent like a good five hours to get at least one mount and that was like the golden main reigns which has now considerably dropped in value since then and that's like I like 87,000 gold for that golden main reigns for me it used to be at like 200 odd thousand gold for it so just bear that one in mind that it may not be as lucrative as you think because you could always like farm up something else in the meantime and get that same gold value by just doing like five hours or six hours or how many ever hours of like material farming now at the moment I'm finding that material farming and raw gold farming is probably your best method in order to get the rest of your brutus or like literally it's going to be a grind fest to get to that end point but for me it's more stockpiling for myself because I already have my Brutosaur and all that jazz so what I'm focusing on now is stockpiling towards Shadowlands and moving forward. Alongside that I do have some other news that we were actually discussing and I have finally finished the actual update on the Transmog module. Yes I have finished it. I It doesn't actually look that different but the data behind it in the back end actually has changed quite considerably. We have actually updated all of the data logs and now it should hopefully give you a better uh, transmog value for those farms so when the actual when it when worth it actually comes out of its beta form and comes out into live for everyone uh, you'll be able to see a much more accurate valuation of what you're likely to be getting for the transmog module. Now alongside that, Bunny actually, I was talking to her yesterday on the Discord and she actually posted something as well and that is putting in vendor gold stuff into the like the flipping section or something and that has actually sprung into my mind as well like how much gold could you actually make from just doing vendor flips and you could actually put that into the flippings module as well so we could just do vendor gold or something or just vendors. So. There is quite a few things that we can do right there. Obviously there are still some few bugs to actually get fixed for the beta of Worth It. So, I, so until they are resolved, we obviously won't be pushing out the add-on because obviously if it's not fully working, there's no point in updating it because it will just screw things over for everyone else. So that's something that I will say right there. Now, another thing of note that I would like to say is yeah, I'm taking a bit of a casual uh, approach to gold making at this moment in time due to the fact that it's incredibly difficult at the moment to actually make any form of headway with that. So what I'm going to be doing is stockpiling. And I've been overviewing this and seeing what I could actually invest in for Shadowlands. Now obviously I know what I've actually stated like the other day about what I was actually going to be stockpiling for Shadowlands, but some other things have popped into my head that can actually fluctuate. So I probably may do an update video on all that. This video today is more along the lines of me just speaking my mind about the market and all the other different things that I'm stockpiling at the moment in order to make some gold when Shadowlands actually comes about. So other than that guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow.